Hey there, friends. It is me, HL Montech, and I'm here with something totally awesome. Tinkercad has got an awesome tool called Code Blocks, and the people that are working on Code Blocks enabled SVG exports. So now we can create designs that we can use on the Glowforge. So let's whip something up and see how it works. To enter Code Blocks, simply click the new Code Blocks choice. Code Blocks has a lot of amazing starters that you can watch happen. If you scroll down, that's where your work will be when you're done. I am going to do a new design. Let's begin by creating a new object. And we are going to name this object Base, because this is going to be the base of my phone stand. I'm going to make it with a rectangle shape. So if I go to Shapes, I can grab the box. And then when you click the handles, you can change its parameters. I know that I want mine to be 70 wide and I want it to be 120 long, so it'll be 12 centimeters deep. And I'm making mine out of cardboard, so I'm gonna show it as four millimeters. And I'm gonna give it an edge of two, and I'm gonna give it five for the steps. When you hit play, your shape arrives, but if you look at the front, you'll notice that it's half above and half below zero. When you first drop objects in, they always line up like that which is actually pretty nice for laser cutting because I wanted to use the middle of this design or the profile for what I'm going to make. The idea for my phone stand is simply going to be a rectangle like this and then a groove that slips through the laser cut hole and now it stands it up like that. To make this happen we need to cut the hole out right here and I just want to simply bring out another box. I want to change it to a hole and then I'm going to change its measurements. I want to leave enough room so that it's sturdy. So I'm going to use 40 for the width. And then I need to make the hole so it cuts all the way through. So my length, instead of 120, I'm going to just leave as 20. That'll give it plenty of space for cutting. And then the height again is 4 millimeters because I'm building with 4 millimeter cardboard, no edge steps. And then when I hit play, you'll see this lines up back on this part of the project. I'm going to look at it from the corner. These measurements are not what I wanted. This length needs to be 4, and this height is going to be the 20 for the hole that gets cut out. When I hit play again, then I can see how my cardboard adjusts. And you'll notice that looks like a piece of cardboard, and we can look at it from the side to just prove that that's what's going to happen. I need to move this to a different location, and we do that with the modify commands. Simply drop in a move. I'm going to rotate to the front. I right click drag so you can see that. This is X, this is Y, and I want to do a negative Y. And I'm going to slide this down negative 30 and see if I like it. So if I type negative 30 and hit play, that's how far the part moves down. And I think that's going to be acceptable. At this point, I bring in the cool group command. And now when I hit play, I have got my back for my laser cut project. I'm all done with this piece, so now I'm going to export it. And I'm going to export it as an SVG. And then I'm going to put it in my 3D modeling keychains folder, and I need to change the name. And I'll call it CodeBlocks Phone Stand Base and hit save. Now if you were looking closely, the only choice I had was export, so I can't export pieces. So what I'm going to do is rename my project as Phone Stand Base. And then I'm going to go back to my Code Blocks page, and I'm going to hit the gear to duplicate it. So now I've got the base that will always be saved, and I can launch what is going to be, instead of copy of Phone Stand Base, this will be the support. And I'll get rid of the word copy of. I'm going to warn you that you cannot reuse the variable base. So when we create the next object, which I just said was going to be the support, you need to do that separate. I do want to reuse some of these pieces though. I'm going to start by bringing out these two and these two. And then I'm going to do Control-C and Control-V to bring those up to my support. 
I'll reconnect my base so that I can see it. Eventually, I'll delete it. But right now, I'm going to pick a different color for this piece. And then these are going to be additions on this one. So I'm going to make them back into a solid, but I'm going to make it a weird color. If we hit play, you'll see now we've got a whole bunch of crazy stuff going on. I'm going to take my base and move it so it's out of my way. I'm going to go 80 to the right and hit play. And now you'll see I have my two parts on the work plane so that I can have the finished piece and I can start building the little part that's going to stick through the hole. If you remember our design, this piece back here is about half as big as the other. So let's start by just taking this and making it 60. And then I've got to make the hole that pokes through. Let's hit play and see what we've got now. Once again, the back, and then this is going to be the part that'll be on the back of this, and we need the tab. If we look at this from a corner, you can see this piece won't work for the tab unless we do some changes like make this 20 and make this the 4 now because it's going to stick out the front of this shape. Hit play and take a peek at it. If you want to have this render faster, you can just move the speed up and then it happens instantly. Now let's move this little, I'm going to call it the tongue, and let's move it down that Y again. Since my project is 30, that means I need to move negative 30. And now when we hit play, that piece will be sticking out the front. Of course, it's only half out because we've got to double it. So let's do another 10. We'll do negative 40. And see if that lines up just the way we expect it. If you do a negative negative, it turns into a positive. Do be careful of that. That was what I was looking for. I want to make sure these parts are really solid though. So I'm going to back this up a couple of millimeters. So that way it uh, is firmly attached. And then I'm going to change this length to 25. I'm even going to make it 35 so it sticks out a little further. And that way the phone that rests on it will have a little more support. Now because of the way these work, they are definitely centered. I can bring in the group, combine my part, and now when I hit play, my part is ready, but you'll notice it has multicolor on. If I hit play with multicolor not turned on, then it looks more like the part that's going to slide through that hole. Just looking at these edges, I think I do want to round them, so I'm going to put a 2 and a 5 on this as well. And then when we hit play, watch this. All of a sudden, it is rounded just like the other part, and it is time to export. I do not want to export this part though, so I'm going to just get rid of it. I know that my two parts match up because I saw them match up. And now I can hit export SVG and bam, we are ready to go to the laser cutter. Bringing them into the Glowforge looks just like this. We click upload, of course, move to the folder where we store them. Like I said, mine is in my 3D model and keychains folder. And in the keychains folder, there's the support. All right, so here you can see one piece added to the Glowforge. Let's quickly open the other one and see what it looks like. Boom, two parts ready for cutting, just like you'd expect. I just need to get some cardboard and make it happen. All right, so after just a couple minutes, our combination code blocks and Glowforge project has been cut out. And here is our simple phone tablet. How crazy is that? Simple numbers, now we need to test it. Let's grab a phone. All right. So, as you can see, it holds the phone really nice, even allows for you to turn it the other way, if that is what you prefer. Alrighty friends, so there you go. Code blocks allow you to design cool things fast and very precise. 
then cut them with your laser cutter. Friends, if you found this useful, please mash that like button. If you have a question, comment, or a suggestion, add it down below. If you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Mash that subscribe button, and last but not least, hit the notification bell if you want to be the first to know when there's a brand new movie from me, HL Montech. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Thank you.